Now, women comprise 54% of Zimbabwe's population, but the new cabinet does not in any way reflect that. President Emerson Nangagwa appointed his new cabinet earlier this week, retaining many of his old members and including several young members of his ZANU-PF party, which included his son, Kuda Kwashi. Now, more significantly, he gave men the lion's share of ministerial positions. Out of the 26 ministers, only six are women. For well, joining our gathering to discuss this very crucial issue, uh, first we have Linda Sugirira Masarira, the presidential aspirant, LEAD lead, Zimbabwe. Thank you so much, Linda, for joining us. All right, uh, while we wait for Linda, we also have our second guest, Sakila Sifelani Ngoma, the executive director, Women in Politics Support Unit, Harare, Zimbabwe. Um, can you hear us? Sakila, are you there? Okay. Well, we also wait for our second guest. We also have Gibson Nikazino, the political and international relations analyst, Harare, Zimbabwe. Gibson, can you hear us? Thank you so much for having me. Blessings. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us. Ironically, uh, we're ready to start with you. We also need the women because we're talking about women participation. Uh, I think our the technical issues are gender biased, but we'll wait to fix that. But in the meantime, let's go straight to the conversation. Uh, now, Gibson, looking at the recent cabinet appointment, do, doesn't this go against the constitution? I mean, section 17 of Zimbabwe's constitution calls for the state to promote full gender balance and rectify gender discrimination in Zimbabwe. And uh, that has been a, an issue for a long time now. So doesn't this appointment go against the constitution once again? Um, thank you so much, Blessings. So the first thing I would want to highlight before delving into the issue of the constitu uh, constitutionality or non-constitutionality relates to the political space itself, uh, the platform of uh, political participation as a public sphere, how convenient is it in terms of serving the interests of um, the women so when you look at um, Zimbabwe's political space, I'll give you two scenarios. Uh, the first one is the 2018 elections, where you realize that uh, uh, we had the four women presidential contestants, for instance, out of uh, 23. But now, uh, in the 2023 election, we only had one lady who was contesting against 10 uh, men who were vying for the top job. So there is a percentage uh, decrease in terms of um, the availability of the political space. And uh, besides looking at the presidential contestants, you also realize that uh, in our parliament at the moment, there are 19 women who have been elected out of 210 uh, seats. Uh, that tells a lot again in terms of what uh, political participation for women has been or should be. And now when we look at the uh, cabinet that was appointed by President Mnanga, we only have six women. Uh, that is just about 16% of the cabinet. Uh, that is reflecting the nature of the political space which we now have in Zimbabwe. It appears that it's a reprivatization of uh, the political space where women they are pushed into private uh, spaces so that their participation is uh, not guaranteed uh, or is not visible. So in terms of this, uh, speaking to the constitutionality of what uh, Zimbabwe is expected to be, I think uh, uh, it is, uh, I, I wouldn't want to say it is unconstitutional, but it is a governance challenge that is being uh, uh, scene which is failing to be inclusive in nature to accommodate the interests of women and to ensure that uh, equality in terms of leadership is not only determined uh, by having men dominating the political space or creating platforms of inequality, but also by ensuring that women they play a positive role in uh, the political governance structure in Zimbabwe. So I wouldn't want to say uh, it is unconstitutional because no one has taken this issue to court to ensure that uh, 
the constitutionality is uh, reflected in uh, the representation of the people in the in the in the in the cabinet all right gibson thank you so very much <laughs>